so uh, I thought I'd come down to this area um, to talk about being outdoors and being in nature. This is an area we call the Wildwoods. And uh, an Irish friend of mine, Bodhi Darker, introduced me to an expression, uh, which is being in your tree, which I think means something like being comfortable and happy in what you're doing. Um, well, today I'm quite literally in my tree. This is an old oak tree and it has the fantastic advantage of being big enough that you can sit in it comfortably. In fact, we've got a whole retreat walking group in here one day. Uh, and low enough to the ground that I can get up it without risking killing myself. Um, it's a great tree. Look, it's even got another tree growing inside it. Um, this is a, a rowan or mountain ash. And these fantastic polypody ferns it's all covered in this beautiful moss. Um, Mogavir was talking about the tops of fence posts. Uh, this slightly upscales that, as well as the, uh, the ferns and the moss. You've got a little bit of wood sorrel here. Um, there's a polystichum moss as well. And uh, yeah, all sorts of other things. I'm sure if I was to ferret around with a hand lens, I'd find lots of exciting things, but beautifully textured gorgeously scented um, polypody if I just circle around here and get a bit of the root it won't take much um, but the root of polypody uh, it's a bit of an acquired taste this one's nice and young so um, mm, very sort of tanniny um, slightly aniseedy and uh, a little unusual, but edible. Mm. There's a buckler fern as well behind me. So this is a great place just to sit and reflect. It's a fantastic place just to while away a bit of time and uh, yeah just quietly get accustomed to uh, to the outdoors to nature what a tree great place to hang out So we're just um, making our way up the Wildwoods. This, this area is it's, it's a steeply, uh, it's a steep slope um, with these broken rocks and uh, old trees. I'm in a little hazel grove here. You can see these hazels have got like, multiple generations of, uh, of branches and boughs. So I've got the camera sitting on a, an old half rotted one that's just opened out from the, uh, the heart of the, of the ancient hazel. And um, the ground at the moment, the, the smell in the air is rich with the wild garlic. This, this damp woodland is um, perfect for wild garlic. Very distinctive. Makes an excellent pesto. Just be, um, if you're gathering wild garlic, probably the only thing that's poisonous that really looks like it is... Um, uh, what Lily of the Valley, which grows in a very similar habitat, but doesn't smell at all like garlic. These uh, wet, moist uh, woodlands are absolutely packed full of amazing uh, life. You really start to feel like you're in a different world um, when you're up here. I've just come a bit closer so you can also see these amazing uh, liverworts. You quite often get actually in the stream beds these fantastic liverworts, beautiful plants. This really is the sort of place you can just, even if you don't know what any of these things are, you don't have any names for these things, you can just really get into looking deeply, more and more deeply into everything you see and smelling it's so rich, it's gorgeous. So these sort of uh, ancient gnarled trees, this is actually a, <clears throat> actually a birch coming out of the rock here. And next to it, an ash. 
and uh, just growing out of the rock as well, we've got wood sage. Wood sage isn't that heavily scented, but it's still a pleasantly flavoured um, herb. And just these beautiful, uh, beautiful little dells with springs and streams coming through them. Um, delightful. I mean, this is just, it's a playground really. It's, uh, you just sort of forget the world when you're up here. You forget the world, everything just recedes and you're just immersed in this rich, wonderful, overflowing, um, wet thing, wet place, old wet place. Well, you get the idea, don't you? So I've just followed this stream up and uh, as you can see, uh, the stream itself, excuse my rather shaky camera work, but as you can see, the stream itself flows out of this rock here. I mean, if ever there was an invitation, this has to be an invitation, doesn't it? Really, I mean, look at that. Mm. Here's some of the, uh, the fern I was talking about, I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but, uh, I mean, who wouldn't be tempted, really? Who, who wouldn't? So one of the wonderful things about uh, doing retreats in the outdoors with people and just spending time in the outdoors generally is uh, oops, rediscovering the sort of childlike, playful aspect of ourselves. We, uh, so easy isn't it to um, sort of fall into a sort of um, habitual uh, behaviour, a sort of... Um, not quite awake to our experience, not quite kind of um, vibrant. And uh, it's always been a great, I mean, I love when I get the opportunity to bring people up here. It's just always so playful. Um, it's like something in us gets wakened up, becomes alive again. And uh, whether it's that sort of scrambling around, having a bit of fun, or whether it's just really sitting quietly and, and imbibing the place that opportunity to uh, um, sort of forget something about our preoccupations and uh, live in a, a spontaneous unfolding moment of our, of our lives, even if, even if just briefly. Well, this is actually uh, a moss-covered boulder that I'm sitting on here, and um, in a minute I'll swing around to see the view, but uh, I'm not going to go much further up today, um, partly because I'm running out of daylight, and uh, partly because in the next tier of cliffs up, there's a peregrine falcon's nest, and they're quite susceptible to being disturbed, so I tend to... Uh, avoid going up. There's a, actually a big cliff you can stand on the top of. Um, I've got a video on the Donnacosha YouTube channel on uh, the five scandals and the, uh, the Vedanar video gives you a nice sense of the view from the top there so if you fancy checking that out. Um, I've been passing wild strawberry on the way up, obviously in flower at the moment, not in uh, berries, and um, quite a lot of, uh, of violet. Um, both dog violet and, uh, and marsh violet. Um, beautiful sort of flashes of that rich blue colour. Just give you a little spin of the view. So 
you get Loch Voyle down there and the Bialach. Wonderful place just to sit for a few minutes and um, yeah, take it in. There's a reel as well as the bird, you can probably hear the robin singing behind me. Um, and uh, one of the lovely things about this place is it's so elemental as well as the, the life of the, all the mosses and ferns and trees and birds. Um, there's a real sense of, uh, of the timelessness of the place. You can imagine places like this uh, little visited and they, uh, you sort of, as a, as a human, you, you feel relatively insignificant. It doesn't take much to drop your own preoccupations and uh, realize that the, the antiquity of the land is much greater than us. And uh, I always find that uh, refreshing, always very refreshing. Also, there's a real sense of the size of the rocks here, the solidity of the earth and as well space. I've left the camera looking out uh, over, over Loch Voyle. So there's a sense of spaciousness. So you've got the elements of earth and air and space. And we've been looking at water, wetness, as well as the water of the loch down there. And um, it's like the, uh, the senses, the mind, one sense of being is just naturally sort of led outwards. I don't need to... Uh, uh, do anything as such, um, apart from sort of stop being preoccupied and obsessed with myself. Uh, and there's a sort of, and that's really quite easy here as well. It's such a, it's such an enthralling environment. So I'm just going to uh, take a bit of the evening to, um, yeah, just sit quietly and let the mind be spacious, let the body be ancient and timeless and let my heart just expand into a, an easefulness, an easefulness, an easeful lifefulness of being. 